Hey everyone, in today's video, what we are going to do is we are going to install Call Manager 15 on an ESX box. So if you have noticed, right, Cisco has released various versions in the past, like starting from Call Manager 3, 4, 5, 6, till 15. Now, there were few, uh, I mean, uh, when uh, Cisco released uh, a version from, let's say, so Call Manager 7 to 8, there was a gap of quite a few years, right? And 7, 8 to 9, there was a gap of few years, and it has it had a lot of features uh, that Cisco added when releasing a version change. Now, Cisco uh, re recently released Call Manager 14, and Sooner after releasing Call Manager 14, Cisco has come up with Call Manager 15. There is no much, uh, you know, uh, duration or uh, you know dates um, gap between Call Manager 15 and 14. Now I'll tell you the reason why Cisco has released Call Manager 15. Um, so if you notice, right, Call Manager 10, 11. Right, they were running the base operating system used to run on Red Hat Linux 5 or 6, right? And after Cisco released Call Manager 12 version or 14 version, Cisco used CentOS as the base operating system. Now, CentOS has announced end of life for the products. Now, Cisco wanted to be ahead of the game, and Cisco, you know, also uh, made Call Manager 14 end of life as well. So because Call Manager 14 was using CentOS as the base operating system, and Cisco uh, came up with Call Manager 15, which is using uh, Alma Linux as the base operating system. So Alma Linux is uh, an open source uh, system, and I hope Cisco continues with this particular base operating system for a longer period of time, and there should not be any change in the base operating system. And this particular call measure 15 is supported on ESX minimum version of 7.0.3. It is no longer support, call measure 15 is no longer supported in 6.7 ESXi or 6.5 ESXi or anything before that. It is supported in 15, 7.0.3. Uh, now, if you notice, right, Earlier, in at least in 12.5, there were different different capacity um, based on the I mean users uh, capacity and uh, you know um, and uh, configuration, right? For example, 150 users to vCPU, 4 GB RAM, 80 GB hard drive. For 1000 users to vCPU, 6 GB RAM, 80 GB hard drive. Likewise for 2500, 7500, and for 10,000 users. So these are the configuration. Now, if you move to 14 right so 14 it says uh, for a um, small cluster so if you see for a small cluster you need to have 2 vcpu 6 gb ram 80 gb hard drive for medium 2 vcpus 8 gb ram and 110 hard drive for a larger capacity 2 vcpus 8 gb ram and 110 gb hard drive now with 14 right oh, sorry with 15 right so for the smaller, you need two vCPUs, 10 GB of RAM, and one 110 hard drive. Similarly for medium, two, 12, one 110, and for large, four, 14, and one 110. So this is the requirement in terms of uh, you know physical or hardware cap capacity or configuration. Now one thing to note, there would not be much feature wise changes when coming from call manager 14 to 15 of course there will be some features would be add, which would be added on 15 but you will not expect many changes on 15 it uh, 15 will also connect to the you know C, uh, CSSM server or the cloud um, you know servers for the licensing purpose directly now as we dis decided like let's go ahead and install call manager 15 on the e6 7 version okay now let's go ahead and create virtual machine on the esxi box now as you know right there are two ways of creating virtual machine on the esxi box one is the manual method so people uh, who do not have access to the ov file right uh, they might have to create the machine manually so which means like uh, you have to input the 
RAM, you have to input the hard drive, you have to input the uh, CPU, you have to input the Linux OS version and Linux um, guest operating system manually on the ESXi. But for the people who have access to the OV file, they can directly go here and create, uh, you know, register the um, OV file and import all the settings automatically rather than creating it manually. So for the people who do not, do not have access to the OV file, so they can, uh, you know, see what all configurations you need in order to create a virtual machine manually. So I'll create uh, using the OVA file and I'll show you like how what exactly you need when you are creating it manually create register a VM Here select your deploy a virtual machine from an OVF or OVA file click on next So enter the name of the machine So this is the name I'm going to input select here and choose your OVA file Okay click on next click on next now, what kind of, uh, if you have multiple networks, choose the network based on your requirement and choose the deployment type based on your sizing. So if you have a small, medium or large, so choose it accordingly. So based on whatever you choose, right, the configuration will be selected accordingly. So for example, if you choose small, right, so small will be something like this, two vCPUs, 10 GB RAM, 1110 hard drive. If you choose medium, so medium gonna be Two vcpu 12 gb ram 110 hard drive now if you choose the large one so large one gonna be 4 vcpu 14 gb ram 1110 hard drive so let's choose the medium one and this provisioning let it be thin and power it on automatically is what we have checked we'll uncheck this for now click on next so now this is your um, final configuration how exactly it gonna look like so if you see here guest operating system it says as alma linux and uh, if you notice um if i'll show the configuration which will uh, say like uh, you'll not get any option alma linux on the drop down menu which i'll show you in a while but at this moment you see the guest operating system is shown as alma linux however rest of the configuration is the same on most of the uh, call manager configuration when you import an ova click on finish now right click here edit setting so when you click on edit setting so if you see here by default, to, for the medium one, two vCPUs are allocated, 12 GB of RAM is allocated, 110 GB of your hard drive is allocated, and it's gonna be thin provision, right? And then if you scroll down, so the rest of the configuration is CD, DVD, network adapter, and whatnot, go to the VM option, general option, and here the guest OS is Linux, and guest OS version is other 4X or later Linux 64-bit. So if you notice, it does not show you Alma Linux. So if you scroll down to the entire menu, right, nowhere it will show you Alma Linux on the drop-down. So here you have to choose other 4x or later Linux 64-bit if you are doing it manually, right? So this is the configuration you have to take care of. Guest operating system, right? I'll go to the virtual hardware, select the data store, choose the call manager so by default when you download the uh, iso file it is going to be non bootable one you have to convert this non bootable file to a bootable file whether it is call manager unity connection uc6 or i'm in presence right so how do you convert this to a bootable you can go to my um, youtube videos i have created a uh, tutorial on how do you convert a non bootable uh, file to a bootable one so the process is fairly simple so you need uh, to have a software like power iso or ultra iso and insert this iso file and make it as a bootable so the process you can follow it in my youtube channel or also it is available in my blog as well right so i'll choose this this is a file so this is already a bootable file and i'll click on connect save okay so this particular virtual machine is configured so i'll power it on now So, though it is uh, powered on, it is trying to find the, you know, um, it is not able to either read the CD DVD. Looks like it is not properly connected. I'll power it off again and let's power it. Let's see the settings again. Edit settings. Okay, so this is not connected. Connected, power on. Save. Let's see again. 
Okay, this time it loaded. So it is going to do multiple things like uh, validating your hardware, validating pre-configuration and whatnot, and then install your call manager. So this, I believe the process should be same like your, um, how, how did you do uh, installation of your call manager 10, 11, 12, but let's validate this during the installation process. Okay, this may take some time. So by the time this is happening, right? What we can, what I'm going to show you is I'm, I've already added a DNS record for this installation. So if I'll quickly show you here on my DNS server. So CGCUCM is added on the DNS server, and the IP I'm going to assign for this particular server call manager is 172.160.180. Okay. So this entry is added. So let's go back here. So it is asking for the disk check, media check. I'll say skip. So it is detecting server hardware. So it will do some validation on the VMware, uh, whether the, it is a VMware server or not. So it is pass detecting. So now if you notice here, you will see only getting an option to install call manager, but in 10.x or 11.x, you used to have an option to install call manager and Unity connection both based on the configuration that you have you know, uh, configured on the virtual machine. But one ISO file can do both Unity connection as well as call manager. But in case of 15, one ISO file is dedicated to only call manager. For the Unity connection, you have a separate file. We'll click on OK. It says, uh, do you want to proceed with installation? We'll say yes, because we want to install 15 version on the virtual machine. Do you want to proceed? We'll say yes, we want to proceed. Do you want to apply a patch? We are not applying any patch, so we'll say no. Do you want to do the basic installation? We'll say yes. And now it is the time to select the time zone configuration for, in my case, I'm going to select this Asia Kolkata. So this is the time zone I'm going to select for the call manager. Now you want, do you want to have auto negotiation enable or not like uh, you want to continue with, continue with the auto negotiation configuration so we'll say yes you want to change any mtu size so we don't change any mtu size which is whatever is there by default we use the same you want to use tscp we'll say of course no because we don't want to run the call manager with the tscp configuration so we'll say no and here it's asking for the host name so we'll define cg cucm so remember this is the same name that is there on the DNS server, CG CUCM and CG CUCM. And the IP address I'm going to assign 172.160.180. is your two, sorry, three is my gateway address. Okay. Do you want to enable DNS? So we'll say yes. Here I'm going to enter the DNS IP address. This is my DNS server. And the domain is musicalarming.com. Click on OK. Administrator username. So this is the administrator username. So how do you log into the call manager, right? So we'll enter the username and the password. So this is for your certificate information. What is the certificate uh, you want to, I mean, what is the organization, unit, location, state, country. So we'll make it as UC collabing, for example, IT, Bangalore, Karnataka, India. So we have entered this information for the certificate purpose. Is it the first node in this cluster? So we'll say yes, because this is the first call manager publisher we are installing. So I've defined the NDP IP address 172.160.1 is the NDP IP address. Now it is asking for your security password. So this password is used for you know, communication between the cluster nodes and is also used for the, um, for the DRS encryption to back up the tar files. Do you want to enable SMTP? We'll say no because we don't want to run SMTP. 
disable all call homes at this time click on okay now it is asking you to enter the administrative credential to access the web page remember one thing this particular page is for your web page and the previous one which you got that was for platform so which means that was for your os admin level so that means for your cli and this is for your gui access so how you want to access the gui web page click on ok so it says like platform configuration confirmation the platform configuration is complete click on ok to continue or back to change the configuration so we'll click on ok so now this is the time when your installation begins so the installation may take around uh, one and a half hour to two hours or maybe two and a half hours depending on the speed configuration allocated and the performance of your system so that's what i believe it should take around two hours approx and it may stop in between if in case if it encounters some issue for example the issue can be related to your network the issue can be related to your configuration maybe ip or anything as such right so in that case the config the installation will stop and will ask you to you know revalidate those and uh, correct them if in case everything goes well so the installation will continue and then you will see the cli login page if it succeeds right so what i'll do is i'll pause the video for now i'll resume the video if in case if there is any error or i'll resume the video if in case if uh, the call manager is successfully installed so whatever the condition is i'll resume the video in that condition right okay i just resumed in between i see there is a progress going on in solution usm serviceability component so it'll it should take another uh, probably 30 minutes to one hour max to max and it should complete all the installation so i'll again resume the video when the installation is completed okay i see the installation is completed i see the login page let's try to log in and see if we are able to log in in the meanwhile i'll also log into the gui page right yep the platform page is coming up and on the gui side of it the page is still loading So I see a warning, DNS unreachable. So we'll get it fixed. But however, I see like uh, the installation was done successfully, at least on the CLI level, that's what I can see. Let's see on the GUI. All right. So GUI sees like uh, we get 90 days of evaluation period and this call manager can run for 90 days. And after that, uh, you will have to get registered. Otherwise, it will stop functioning and more or less uh, the menu are same and the feature, some of the other feature might be different. But yes, uh, the interface is same as what you have seen in Core Manager 12 or 14 or maybe 10 or 11 as well. Right. So this is how we exactly install Core Manager. I hope this video is informative for you. Thank you for watching.